you need to learn which acids are the strong acids. These are the acids that ionize 100%. HCl, HBr, HI, HClO4, HNO3, H2SO4. They also need to learn the strong bases. These are the ones that dissociate 100%. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and strontium hydroxide. The rest of the acids and bases, including your acidic cations and basic anions, are weak. You need to memorize these, that way when you come across them, you know that they break up 100% or not. A molecular formula unit equation is one in which the reactants and products are written as if they were molecules or formula units, even though they may actually exist in solution as ions. Many ionic compounds undergo a displacement reaction between the cation of one species with the anion of another. Disma displacement involves switching atoms or ions between species, balancing the charges between ions by adding subscripts, then balancing the atoms in the reaction by changing coefficients on substances and adding the states, solid, liquid, aqueous, or gas. Let's look at calcium hydroxide plus sodium carbonate. First thing you've got to be able to do is write the formulas from the words of the of substances. So for calcium hydroxide, you know it's OH minus. For hydroxide, calcium is a plus 2. So to balance that out, we're going to have to put uh, a subscript 2 on the hydroxide. Then you had sodium carbonate. Sodium is a plus 1. Carbonate is CO32 minus. So you're going to need two sodiums for every one carbon. Now, to write my products in this case, we're saying it would be a displacement. So you're going to take the cation of one, which would be calcium, and the anion of the other one, which is carbonate, put them together. Then take the anion of the other one and the cation of, of the other one and put those together, which would be sodium and hydroxide. Which means I get calcium carbonate plus sodium hydroxide. Now I need to make sure that the charges are balanced. CO3 is a 2 minus, calcium is a 2 plus. Well, I don't need to fix anything there. OH minus and sodium plus, that's balance, so nothing to do there. So the next step is to balance your whole equation, which I would put a 2 in front of the sodium, and then put the states. We know S stands for solid, uh, L for liquid, aqueous, with, that would be your strong, weak acid bases and your soluble salts, and then G for gases. In this case, sodium, uh, calcium hydroxide is a strong base, therefore it's going to be aqueous. Sodium carbonate is a soluble salt, Therefore, it will be aqueous. Calcium carbonate is an insoluble salt, so we put solid. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so it's soluble, so we put aqueous. This is your molecular equation. The total ionic equation represents the strong electrolytes as separate independent ions. This is a more accurate representation of the way electrolytes behave in solution. The total ionic equation is a chemical equation which strong electrolytes, such as soluble ionic salt compounds, use strong acids and bases, are written as separate ions. Note your gases, your liquids, your insoluble salts, and your weak acids and bases do not break up into ions. So, the molecular equation, going back to the one that we just did, we also know which ones are the strong bases and insoluble salts, etc., from the previous slide. Now we're going to write our total ionic. So we need to look at those things that break up 100%, which would be your strong bases, soluble salts, and strong acids. Well, since calcium hydroxide is a strong base, that breaks up into ions. We break it up into its ions carrying in the two coefficient for hydroxide. Then we have a soluble salt, sodium carbonate. That's going to break up into ions, so we have two sodium ions and then a carbonate ion. The insoluble salt will not break up. It will stay whole as it is. And then we have a strong base. So that would break up into two sodiums and also two hydroxides. Next is your net ionic equation. A net ionic equation is a chemical equation from which the spectator ions have been removed. So what are spectators? Spectator ion is an ion in an ionic equation that does not take part in reaction. 
the species does not change form from the reactants to products. Example in this particular problem, sodium plus and hydroxide minus, both of those are aqueous ions on the reactant side of your total ionic as well as on your product side. These are unchanged in the reaction and are spectators. So we will eliminate them when we write the net ionic equation. So the hydroxides go away and the sodiums go away, giving us our net ionic equation. This is basically telling us the actual chemistry going on. Sodium and hydroxide are just watching the reaction go. They're just spectators. They're not taking part in the reaction. Nothing has happened to them. If you did everything correctly, then your net ionic should be balanced as well, which in this case is the precipitation of calcium carbonate is the, is the actual chemistry going on in this reaction, and you can see it's balanced as well. Let's try an example. Now first, what we're going to have to do is start off with the molecular equation. So in that case, we'll switch atoms or ions between species, then balance charges between ions by adding subscripts, then balance the atoms in the reaction by changing coefficients or substances, and then add our states. So we're looking at HNO3, nitric acid, and MgOH, subscript 2, magnesium hydroxide. So we're going to need to figure out what are going to be our products. So the cation from one will go with the anions of the other, and the cation will go with the anions of the first. So that means then we're looking at MgNO3 and H2O. Well, H2O is balanced. you got an H plus and OH minus, not a problem. But magnesium has a 2 plus charge. Nitrate has a minus 1. Therefore, we're going to have to balance this by making two nitrates. So the products are magnesium nitrate and water. Now we need to balance the actual atoms. So take a 2 in front of the nitric acid and a 2 in front of the water. So now all atoms are balanced. And we also got to finish the states for our products. Magnesium nitrate is a soluble salt, so we call that aqueous. And water is our solvent, so that is liquid. So now we've got to write the total ionic. So to do that, we need to say, what is each species? So we're going to break up the strong acids and bases and soluble salts, and everything else will come down. So we're looking at nitric acid, which is a strong acid. Therefore, that breaks up 100%. So we get two H pluses and two nitrates. Then we have magnesium hydroxide, which is an insoluble salt. Therefore, that will come down just like it's written. Then we have magnesium nitrate, which is a soluble salt. And for that, would break up into magnesium 2 plus and 2 nitrates. And then we have water, which is our solvent, which will come down. The net ionic, we will move spectators. So we're looking for things that are exactly the same on both sides. Do we have anything like that? Well, yes, we do. We have the nitrates. And only species that are exactly the same on both sides, those are spectators, so we will remove them and bring everything else down. Which gives us two H pluses plus magnesium hydroxide, gives me magnesium two plus plus two waters, which is my net ionic equation, the essential reaction going on. Let's look at another example. HCN and sodium hydroxide. So once again, we'll take the cation and anions and switch them, which then gets us NCN and water. The substances are balanced. CN is a minus charge. Sodium is a plus one, so no change there. But then we have to balance the whole equation. And in that case, everything's a one coefficient. Not a problem there. And we got to put the states. Sodium cyanide is a soluble salt, so we put aqueous for that. And water is our liquid. Total ionic, we get, we got to break those things or they break up 100%, which would be your strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts. Uh, HCN is a weak acid, so therefore it doesn't break up 100%, so we'll bring that down just like it is. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so we break that up into ions. Sodium cyanide is a soluble salt, so we break that up into ions, and we'll bring down the water. Next is the net ionic, which get rid of the spectators. In this case, we have only one spectator, which is the sodium. Then we bring down the rest of the equation. We 
should be balanced in his um, net ionic equation. Most reactions we study fall into one of the following categories. Precipitation or solid reaction, where you have some solid being formed. Acid-base reaction. Or an oxidation-reduction reaction, which is a transfer of electrons. Let's look at a precipitation reaction. A precipitation reaction occurs in aqueous solution because one of the products is insoluble. It forms some solid. A precipitate is an insoluble solid compound formed during a chemical reaction in a solution. Example, a reaction of sodium chloride with silver nitrate forms silver chloride, an insoluble precipitate according to the solubility rules. So you have sodium chloride plus silver nitrate forms silver chloride solid and sodium nitrate aqueous. And notice we have an arrow here. Sometimes they use an arrow to form a solid uh, coming out or an arrow pointing up to mean a gas being formed. So this is an example of a precipitation reaction because there's a solid being formed as one of the products. Is this a precipitation reaction? Have sodium chloride plus iron 2 nitrate forming iron 2 chloride and sodium nitrate. Well notice that the reactants are all aqueous and then my products are all aqueous because I'm forming two soluble salts. So there is no precipitate being formed, no solid being formed. So the answer to this question, is this a precipitate reaction, is no. No precipitate is formed, therefore not a precipitate reaction. Basically all aqueous ions. Basically there's no reaction going on in the solution format. Homework 27 deals with information with net ionic equations.